Hello everyone! In this lesson we shall obtain expression for the Helmholtz free energy of a ferromagnet in the Ising model using the mean field approximation and make its analysis near the critical temperature. There are many mathematical manipulations in this lesson, so I recommend to perform these manipulations independently for better understanding. First of all, recall that the Helmholtz free energy is defined as difference of internal energy of the system and the product of temperature and entropy. Note that there is heat exchange with the environment, the free energy must be minimal. The internal energy can be described as the mean of the Hamiltonian operator. Taking into account that Hamiltonian in the Ising model has the following form, the internal energy can be written as follows. Considering the mean field approximation, we can rewrite the mean of the product as the product of the means. Taking into account the designation of the order parameter, we obtain for the internal energy the following expression. Let us find the entropy. Gamma is the number of possible states of the system at a given temperature. Here and after we omit the Boltzmann constant. Denote n up and n down as the number of magnetic moments aligned along or against the selected axis z respectively. Therefore, the total number of magnetic moments is equal to the sum of n up and n down. The difference of n up and n down defines the total magnetic moment of the system, or magnetization. On the other hand, the total magnetic moment of the system can be described as follows. Thus, we can rewrite the order parameter in the following form. Actually, if n up is equal to n down, then the order parameter is equal to zero. Therefore, the order is missing. On the other hand, if n up is equal to total number of magnetic moments n, and hence n down is equal to zero, and vice versa, then the apple pie order is presented. Since the order parameter depends on temperature, the difference of n up and n down depends on temperature as well. This fact imposes a limitation on gamma. In other words, the number of possible states of the system at a given temperature implies the number of possible states of the system at a given difference of n up and n down. Let us find the gamma. Taking into account the Stirling's formula, we obtain the entropy. Express n up by n and n down by n through the order parameter x. Finally, for the entropy, we obtain the following form. Note that at x equal to zero, no order, entropy is equal to n natural logarithm of 2. So, gamma is equal to 2 to the nth power. Every magnetic moment has an arbitrary direction. Ultimately, the Helmholtz free energy is described as follows. In general, we must include in this formula the term which does not depend on the order parameter. In other words, this term is not associated with magnetic subsystem but includes for non-contribution and so on. So, we obtained free energy as a function of order parameter, temperature and magnetic field. Let us find it as a function of temperature and magnetic field only. To do this, we should find the order parameter as a function of temperature and magnetic field from the conditions of free energy minimum at constant T and constant H. So, let us find df by dx, considering that df0 by dx is equal to 0. From the condition on the extremum, we obtain the following equation. On this slide, some mathematical manipulations are shown. Finally, we obtain the Curie-Weiss equation for the order parameter. We already know that this equation for zero field and temperature is greater than theta has only one zero solution. And for zero field and temperature is less than theta, there are three solutions, 
In other words, df by dx is equal to 0 at 3 different x. To obtain the minimum, let us find the second derivative d2f by dx squared. Next, we assume that the magnetic field is 0. Recall that the condition on the minimum is d2f by dx squared is greater than 0. Let us check the results obtained. At t is greater than theta, we have only one solution x is equal to 0. Thus, d2f by dx squared is greater than 0. Therefore, this is minimum. At t is less than theta, the solution x is equal to 0 is maximum. Actually, in this case, d2f by dx squared is less than 0. For x is not equal to 0, let us consider two cases for which we already know the approximate analytical expressions for order parameter. The first case t is less than theta and t tends to theta from the left. The second case t is much less than theta. We earlier obtained that at t is less than theta and t tends to theta from the left, the order parameter was expressed as follows. Therefore, in this case, the d2f by dx squared is greater than 0, so this is the minimum. Also, we earlier obtained that at t is much less than theta, the order parameter was expressed as follows. Therefore, in this case, d2f by dx squared is greater than 0, so this is the minimum as well. It can be shown that at any given temperature in the range from 0 to theta, solution of the Curie-Weiss equation with x is not equal to 0 corresponds to local minimum of free energy, and solution with x is equal to 0 corresponds to its local maximum. Finally, we obtain that at t is greater than theta, the paramagnetic state is realized, and at t is less than theta, the ferromagnetic state occurs. We found the Helmholtz free energy at arbitrary temperature and magnetic field. The order parameter is equal to zero at t is greater than theta, and order parameter is much less than one at t is less than theta, and t tends to theta from the left. Therefore, we can approximately expand free energy into Taylor series at t is approximately equal to theta. On this slide, the series expansions for two terms in Helmholtz free energy are presented. Let us combine the previous results. Finally, for the Helmholtz free energy, we obtain the following form. In order not to increase accuracy, let us assume that t is equal to theta in the third term. This equation is correct both at t is greater than theta and at t tends to theta from the left. Let us analyze graphically the dependence f of x at various temperatures and magnetic fields. At t is greater than theta and zero magnetic field, f of x has the minimum at x is equal to zero, it is the atoms do not have the mean magnetic moments. At t is greater than theta and magnetic field is greater than zero, f of x has the minimum at x is greater than zero due to the term minus xh. Analogously, at t is greater than theta, and magnetic field is less than zero, f of x has the minimum at x is less than zero. At t is less than theta and zero magnetic field, f of x has two minima divided by the barrier. Thus, the ground state is doubly degenerated. At t is less than theta and non-zero magnetic field, one of the minima becomes deeper, it is the magnetic field removes the degeneracy. Now, if the magnetic field tends to zero, the macroscopic system remains in the state corresponding to this deeper minimum, since the probability of tunneling through the barrier is very low. 
Note that we analyze the case when temperature tends to theta from the left. However, such pictures qualitatively valid in the whole range of temperatures from zero to theta, but the barrier becomes higher at lower temperatures. Well, in this lesson we obtained expression for the Helmholtz free energy of a ferromagnet as a function of temperature and magnetic field in the Ising model using the mean field approximation. We proved that at temperatures below Curie temperature the ferromagnetic state occurred and at temperatures above the critical temperature the paramagnetic state was realized. The detailed analysis of free energy function near the Curie temperature showed that it had two identical minima at zero field at temperature below the Curie point. Thus, the ground state is doubly degenerated. Opposite, at T is less than theta and non-zero magnetic field, one minimum of the free energy function becomes deeper. Thus, the magnetic field removes the degeneracy. However, one question is still open. What happens in the real systems at zero magnetic field? It is well known that in the real systems the only one of the two different microscopic states with non-zero magnetization is realized. What is it? We shall try to answer on this question in our next lesson.